came from place to place, he is still in the cage. Right. And Real life. Every time the life comes to the wave, they get knocked out. Inspired, informing nations, supporting people in real effective deliverance. Hello, good day, and welcome to the DRM Inspired Talk Show. It's a talk show that is built just for you to keep you inspired in the ministry of deliverance. Today, I would be dealing with limitations along with my guests who is no stranger to you, Dr. Rachel Wise Mason and Deliverance Minister Keon James. I'm your host, Prophet Derek Mason, and it's time to get the ball rolling as usual. Dr. Rachel and Minister Keon James, good afternoon to you good guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. It's a pleasure and I'm excited to have you guys here. I mean, we talk about limitation, right? Which is like one of the biggest issue when persons come to deliverance the that they will highlight issues of limitation, correct? I agree. Right. So we we have been experiencing some little limitations and setbacks and <laughs> even recording, you know, oh, some of our my. our programs, right? But um, what we're going to be dealing with, we're going to, be going to um, actually, give you a breakdown on what the limitation is and we're going to define it. So, Dr. Rachel, right, for the sake of the viewers, um, what is limitation? So, limitation is one of those topics that we have to take a lot of time in ministry to discuss with person because many people go through issues with lack. Um, Minister Kion, do you have a definition for limitation that you want to provide us with? Yes, I do have an illustration of limitation and it's one of the topics that is um, sort of, it is greatly discussed in the churches because everyone will come with a form of limitation and saying, well, I have problems in setback. But my illustration will be, have you ever seen someone owning a bird? And what you will realize is that this bird is being kept by the owner in a cage. And as long as this bird is in the cage, what you will find is that the owner will feed it, the owner will blow the seeds, the owner will take it for walks, the owner will carry it in a savannah where he will meet with other birds. But one of the things that they will realize is that although the bird is going from place to place, he is still in the cage. Right. And yeah. there are many persons that I know personally that experiencing limitation and they try to change their name. It didn't work. Right. They say, if it is I go to Canada, things will be better for me. And it did not work because right. they are like that bird and they are still in the cage. And the owner of that bird is what we can call a taskmaster or a gatekeeper. And this gatekeeper is the enemy. And his responsibility is to guard that bird with diligence so that that bird do not come out. And if for some reason the bird do escape, that owner will cry and he will go after that bird with all his heart. That, that, and that, 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 reminds, right? that reminds me of a co-worker of mine a couple of years ago. He, he liked birds, right? And he went and paid over $400 a bird. I don't know what kind of bird is that. Some yes. kind of cheeky chum. Yes. Some expensive bird, but as well, we so they get real nice. And he bring it in the yard and work, and he open the cage to feed it, and the bird. As soon oh, as the bird does not mean the bird is going to stay. The bird, come on. But then get the $400. As Maybe soon as he would have stayed. If the bird had gotten the $400, he would have stayed. <laughs> so I don't know how we need to be. Be careful looking for that bird. Yeah, I go by my pet shop. Well, yeah. So that's my illustration of um, limitation. That's a nice definition. Yes. So, so mm -hmm. limitation speaks just like the bird, it speaks about hindrances. 
it speaks about a barrier in which one cannot go beyond because just like the bird whether he goes to the savannah yeah. or in the cane field for a walk yeah. there is a barrier whether, whether yeah. physical or spiritual mm -hmm. there is a barrier set in place that this bird cannot go beyond yeah. he is caged his potentials are limited yeah. So from there, I'm going to take it straight to um, the scripture that is in my mind the basis for how I based live teacher. And it's, it's John 10, 10, and it says that the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I am come that they may have life and they may have life, may have it more abundantly. So Christ for all of us to have an abundant life. A life where we would be able to have whatever more than more than just enough, more than just surviving. Yeah. And it entails things that more than just money. It, it entails life. So all the aspects of life that we would actually need. Things like family, relationship, good health, that kind of thing. And what it is that we're not living that life abundantly because the enemy is stealing, killing, and destroying, that means that we are under bondage of limitation. So, so in, in a nutshell, limitation is anything short of your freedom. Anything short of your full potential. potential. That's correct. Right. That is yes. how I see it. So yes. God made each one of us with uh, potential to achieve, yes, to absolutely. learn, to accumulate, to um, get promoted to move up. He also has plans for yes. all of us in terms of where he intended for us to move. And you know, like in the Old Testament, wealth was associated with persons who had a close relationship with God. Yes. Uh, like Abraham and, and Jacob and Job and all of them. And then in the New Testament, spiritual growth is what was affiliated with those who were close to God. Yes. So many of the disciples are not yes. necessarily wealthy. Yes. Though they were wealthy persons, they worked with like Lydia and, and Philemon and all these, these centurions. So there were some wealthy persons, but their wealth came in their ministry. Yes. And they were achieving their full potential yes. yes. ministry-wise. Yes. So limitation is when you are not living that potential. So in other words, if you are a millionaire, most persons have this conception in their mind that once I'm okay, I'm unlimited. But you could be a millionaire and have the potential to be a billionaire. But because you're not a billionaire and you're living a millionaire life, you're still limited. So a lot of persons are actually thinking just because I'm not struggling, I'm doing okay. I'm not under spirit of limitation when you actually are still not living Your to the full potential or the plan that God has in store for you. Some, some people, some people may not know also that um, not because you have money that that to say you're not limited. And, and that brings us to like what are the areas? Oh. Yeah. What what are some of the areas that um, persons can be limited? In? Many persons focus on finances and possessions. The ability to have a job, the ability to have a car or a house. But one of the main reasons we can be limited is firstly saying that we are Christians is number one, we can have hindrances towards our spiritual growth. And we saw that in the book of Exodus. And what you'll see in the book of Exodus is that all true Exodus you will see that God spoke to Moses and said, Go and tell Pharaoh, Exodus 8 verse 1, mm -hmm. Exodus 9, it's mentioned many times, Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may serve me. So one of the major ways in which we are limited as Christians is number one, hindrances in our relationship with God. That's right. Yes. And majority of the time that is due to slavery, Yes. Yes. Correct. So, in terms of the categories of limitations, um, money and wealth is a is, is a big one that persons focus on. Yes. And just to define that is persons who don't have enough or barely have enough to survive. 
So it's those who are, are either they are unemployed, yes. they are dependent on others for survival, or they live paycheck to paycheck, right? Um, and then have those who, you know, um, they don't own their rent, they, they don't have possession of their own car, their own home. Um, we also see the limitation in terms of like a job. Like some persons not being able to have um, the, they have a job and not a career. Like yeah, or limited contracts yes. or, or things like that. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> um, or that, you know, every time they had to get a promotion, somebody else yes. would get a promotion ahead of them. Their persons are limited in their business. Um, so that they will want to start a business and will have issues starting, not getting the capital, not getting the right place, not getting the market. Or, or even if they, they do start the business struggles, um, they are person who are limited in their education. Oh my gosh, they would try to, and I passionate because of this because that's my area, you know, they would try to start the education, try to go to school and meet hindrances with fees and qualifications and gates and all the other things that come in, in, in as a hindrance. They would even try to, even if they start, they would start failing. So they start failing courses, not doing well. And so they're limited even though they have started. Their person, as Minister Kion had mentioned, they are limited spiritually. They're not achieving that prayer life that God desires for them to have. And your prayer life is one of the key things that grounds you to, to withstand all the issues that life will bring them because the limited prayer life, every time the life comes to the wave, they get knocked out. Um, it's limitation in your ministry. Um, not being able to, to start your ministry or function in your ministry in a way that it is effective and where it really adds value to, to the vineyard and to the kingdom of God. Um, so the other categories, persons who are lim limited with family and relationships. Okay. Those are persons who struggle to get married, even if they're married, marriage not happy, or they have struggles with like, starting their children and kids. And, uh, and then there are persons who are limited with their health, yes. where they sip, suffer with sickness and That's disease true. and that. Yes. That is not only just a drain on your finances, but it prevents you from enjoying life, fulfilling yes. your purpose, from functioning yes. on, on a whole. Yes. So those are the categories, I think the eight categories of limitation that I believe um, exist today, and there may be a lot more that we probably would be able to cover. What, what causes, what, what are behind these limitations that if there is so much areas of limitation? What are the core, what are the common factors behind these limitations? Well, as a Christian, there's one common thing that you will see all through the Bible. And even in the Old Testament, you will see that Israel lose wars because when they give their heart over to idolatry, we saw Achan, right? Where it is, they were defeated because he disobeyed. So one of the main things that brings on limitation or that continues a trend of limitation is disobedience. Oh wow, yeah. Um, I, I think of it in terms of like the, the we know whatever we talk about what are the open doors. Do you remember yes. the categories you go by? The first open door is usually generational pieces. Then we have sin of commission, sin, sin of commission. omission, yes. and then when God opens the door. Yes. And in terms of generational curses, we tend to see a lot of limitation passing on the generational yes. line. Yes. Um, it comes through like if family members before would have come out committed acts of greed, yes. idolatry, as yes. you have yes. mentioned, witchcraft. All these things would actually cause curses to pass yes. themselves on in terms of poverty Correct. to the generation that comes after. We also see though that pe the people tend to follow cycles and patterns in the farm family. Yes. Slothfulness and laziness, yes. being laid back, not being proactive, making bad choices, yes. um, not having ambition, even curses with your health yes. tend to be generational as, as well. Um, we see like the sins of commission where people 
uh, commit sins that will actually introduce. And yes. one of the major ones you need, most of the of God, is disobedience. Yes. Um, and there are some there are some things that we do, sins that we commit, that will actually have spirits of limitation affiliated yes. with them. Right. So, for example, if you have an issue with low self-esteem, low self-esteem may prevent you from pushing yourself yes. or things you can come can, 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 can you give an example? For example, um, can anyone, any example you can think of? Low self-esteem? Yes. Yeah, low self-esteem can limit someone in going into a relationship because that voice will keep telling them that you're not good enough, you're not good enough and because of the self-pity and the self-accusation that the enemy will be laying upon them they will never be confident to approach that person and that can cause that person to experience limitation in their marriage limitation so, in their relationship Which is, um, most likely it will link the things that person would have said to you and you Yes, that's good Actually, a while ago, a while ago I, I was in an area there and I heard a, an adult telling the child is about two years old or three years old saying that you, you would never get a Trinidad and father. Look here, yeah, 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 from the day go on and they yeah, 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 yeah. didn't tell him have a half with father telling a little child as well. Wow. You know, and sometimes persons say things and it's broken persons self esteem. Yes. And these and thoughts, insecurities. Yeah. yeah. And when when you when you should move on in life, you keep hearing the voice, you will never become anything in life. Right. You will never amount to anything. Yes. And, you know? and that brings the spirit of limitation. Right. And even with them pursuing education, a job and yes. a business, yes. they will never think that they're good enough. Yes. Yes. Or they're able to handle it or deal yes. with it. We see as present limitation being affiliated as well with faith. Yes. And that goes with low self-esteem. If okay. people encourage and uh, entertain that spirit of faith, they'll never have the, the, the courage to try something yes. or be afraid that if they feel that is a detriment, so they don't try at all. We see it too with people who may be slothful or who are lazy or laid back. Yes where they don't attempt or they, they're in a position where they just want to receive. And because they just want to receive, they're not productive. So therefore they're under a, a curse of limitation. We see it as well with persons who may um, be impatient. Don't want to take that time to hear from God or listen to God and, or pride where they think they know everything already. And, so they act on their own knowledge without seeking the face or hearing from God and therefore get themselves into trouble. Um, and there are persons who tend to be attracted to the wrong people all the time. So they're always in the wrong relationship. They tend to be attracted to the abuser or, or the man that rage, that is silent, dangerous. You know, they talk. Mm -hmm. If you can give, give an example with that same point there, how, how limitation can step in. With who is always going to demand who is always. Or the wrong relationship. Yeah. Sometimes, um, particularly persons come from homes that are abusive. abusive. Or um, sometimes um, some girls tend to be attracted to the man that they think they could change. Yes, correct. Um, and they will go for the guy who may be, you know, attractive and this, but he has issues. He's not mature, or he is not humble, or he has anger issues or problems, and um, and they have this thought that they can actually change this person or whatnot, and then keep getting in relations with the wrong people, and therefore never being able to progress in a way into marriage or having a marriage that's healthy. Yeah. One of one of the areas I'm thinking likewise, and I've seen it a lot, is when young ladies get into the wrong relationship and they find themselves not having to progress with even an opportunity to work because the oh, men yeah. when you want them working yes. they when you want them starting a business they don't want them going to study or to advance themselves yes. in education and these things and they're just like home oh, yes. can yes. i be yes. honest i know a lot of young ladies like that where they where they, they deal with insecure men yes. and the insecure men 
don't want them to progress because they're afraid that if the woman progress, she becomes empowered, would not need them, and then that removes their their position in her life of authority. Yes, yes. You, you know certain countries are like that today, where yeah. women don't have rights and education. Yes. And they, they have to be dependent. Yes. And they, 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 you can't even walk in public without a meal. Yes. That is serious limitation and setback. That is bondage. Yes, that's bondage. That's that bondage. Not, yes. And, and there are times too when even with our health, we don't make the right choices with what we eat. Yes. We don't exercise. Yes. We don't take care of ourselves. So these are sins of commission of things we yes. do that could affect us yes. in all different types of cause issues when it comes to causing these limitations to come into our life. Yes. So, let's look here. so when we think about omission and any thought of all I just the first sin of omission that we do as turn of God that actually brings us first of limitation to us? Well, one of the things that I can say is height. Oh God. And did you just say the truth? <laughs> Types, um, as we see, if it is you want to be blessed by God, we need to follow His principles, His laws, and His ordinance. And one of the things that we were instructed to do is to give a 10%. And we see this in the book of Malachi, chapter 3. And tithes don't only gives you financial favor, but what tithes does is tithes secures favor with God as well. And um, even you yourself, Prophet Derek, you can see where God's favor was upon your ministry. So it is beyond just being blessed financially. Yes, that's correct. That yes. is true. It is beyond. Um, so when people don't pay their tithes, as Minister Keon had mentioned, um, that removes the favor of God from yes. your life. Yes. And what it does, um, according to Malachi 3 9 that he had mentioned, um, let me start with this. It, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. By ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? And in your tithes and offering. And verse 9 says, Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So when you don't pay your tithe, you have essentially cursed yes. your finances. So people who experience a lot of limitation in life, and this is not just finances, no, it's not, it's not. this is all the yes. areas you mentioned yes. with health, relationship, yes. and everything. Yes. When you when you're not paying that tithe, you are essentially robbing God, and therefore everything you have becomes that's correct. Not so, to mention, mm -hmm. it's the only place in the Bible where you see that God says that He will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Oh, it's the God. only place where yeah. God is actually yes. doing deliverance for you. <laughs> he says, I will rebuke the devourer and so, I will open the windows of heaven. So and that's the place that the devourer is mentioned, it means that He's coming that because they, of your disobedience. Because of the curse. Yes. So that is what happens is that once you commit this sin of omission where you don't bring your tithe onto God and, and people don't understand how important that is that God has set up the system for the tithe to take care of the church yes. and therefore the one tenth, he's the one that gives us the strength and yes. the ability to we'll get the education, get up in the morning, we'll get that job, we'll get the work done, get that paycheck, we'll cash that check, do whatever we need to do. And when it is that that one tenth belongs to him, so we bring it to him. So when we don't bring it, we rob him yes. and therefore we spoil the rest. Yes. And the spoilage is where the demons now come in and, and that's where you start seeing the devourer and all these, this, these things coming and, and occurring. Let me, let, me, let me be an advocate here, right? Mm -hmm. um, I need to put it this way. Because it's that word that you know, it's just for uh, conversation sake. Um, you know, some people that say tithing is an Old Testament thing. That's fair. And some churches don't encourage it. Right? They say, once you bring your offering, whatever, and you think, but they don't pressure people to pay tithes 
or it's like gift tags, right? You know, so it's like gift tags, right? Um, so it's not like paid. it's not your, it's not yeah, it's not yours. Yeah, you're you're bringing it, it's in a paid, yeah. And if, what if now somebody for argument say then just for clarification say somebody say um, look, I don't pay my tithes and I have two three business here and look, my business prospering. I have three cars, um, I just travel every, every week. What, what are some of the limitations that that person is not seeing in their life when they just don't pay tithes because that, if they don't pay tithes, they don't believe in that. And they're seeing cars, the business doing well, this happening. What, what, so the first thing I will tell them is that one paid tithe is in the New Testament. Um, in Matthew 23, 23, um, Jesus was saying, Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done. So meaning, yes, you ought to pay tithes on the mint, the anise, and the cumin, um, and not to leave the other undone. So, so just don't pay tithes because the Pharisees would the, the extremists be able to pay tithes um, faithfully, but they weren't dealing with judgment and mercy and faith. So he was saying, no, pay the tithe, but also make sure and have law, judgment, mercy, and faith, and all these different things. So they will be limited in other areas. In other areas, exactly. Um, in so when, when this when this question I have asked, uh, one one cannot afford to see because they are seeing material stuff that they are not limited. As Kieran would have said in the earliest, um, that the, the uh, one can be limited in their relationship with God and that's one of the greatest yes. limitations yes. ever because you, you are you are not in the position to be spiritually blessed in the relationship right. that you should have with God because things don't satisfy yes. a man's life don't consist of the abundance yes. of his stuff neither the things that he possess right. because you can own this whole world and in your life, in your limitation with God, your connection still with God. You're losing your soul. Your soul. <laughs> right? So, um, obedience is one of the key to breaking limitation. Correct? Um, and based on what you said there, we saw that to the rich man and Lazarus. Correct. That's right. right. <laughs> and, and even so, um, the Bible does say that it rains on the just and the unjust. Yes. There are some persons who are running on the mercy of God Amen. and meaning that um, even though they're not walking in alignment, God is still have grace and mercy yes. to still mm -hmm. bless. Right. Right. Um, and in addition to that, we do have cases where the enemy wishes to bless people. Yes. But it's a kind of blessing that comes, it's not a kind of it's a blessing. It's an addition that comes with a burden. Yes. So, you know, um, the, the, the the blessings of the Lord make it rich and, and added no sorrow. Yes. And there's some persons who have a lot of so, sorrow. sorrow. That, that is correct. One can be limited by experiencing an evil trend or a pattern. Yeah. And there are many persons that came into the ministry and said, Pastor, prophet, this is year two and I've lost another child. And they saw this same trend with their grandparents. So there are a lot of evil trends and patterns that persons face in their families and these things can be viewed as limitation as well. Yeah. You know, um, I, I once heard my, uh, my ex-pastor make a reference to persons who put in their trust and money. I say you, 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 you're robbing your audience and you have your money. So you take one to take alone to break down that pile. Yes. Exactly. One to take and one to sit in that tent yes. and all that money goes. That's where the borrower will come in yeah, with yeah. the bills yeah. and yeah. the yeah. So we, we can safely say and agree that one of the 
root causes for the meditation is this obedience yes. okay. towards God. Now, what what are what are some of the ways and um, give examples of how demons are involved in the meditations? Well, according to the scripture that Sister Rachel quote really on, she quote John chapter ten verse ten, and she said that. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And it's the enemy's duty to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We have a sworn enemy whose motive is to destroy us. And in the background, with every bondage that the enemy brings, he brings a level of limitation with him. And we have done countless deliverance. And with every deliverance, you will see a common trend. And you will hear statements like, I have locked up a, a womb so that she will go forth. You are through things that whatever she do shall not prosper. You are through things where we cause the disfavor in her job, in her church. We cause the rejection. So in the background, the enemy works in guns. And what you will realize, viewers, is if you are battling with a simple thing as unforgiveness, you will never be battling with that alone. That's you will right. actually yeah. be battling with anger as well. So when the enemy comes into our life, he will always bring a nature of limitation with him. That is so true. And it's, it's one of the things that when, like, um, whenever the enemy is, is trying to, to function and trying to work with the, the with the order to steal, kill, and to destroy, Satan is not after your stuff. It's not like the devil is trying to accumulate your wealth and they're trying to get cars in hell and they're trying to build mansions in hell. The devil doesn't want your stuff. He knows though that if he wants to frustrate you into abandoning your faith, the easiest way to do that is to attack your stuff, attack your health, attack, and that is what limitation is used as a tool as the enemy to frustrate Christian stuff, uh, to frustrate the body, so that they will give up on their walk or compromise on their walk to accumulate wealth that they will um, put the Bible to seeking for the kingdom of God. You will put things for this and beg God because they're struggling with things. They will prioritize things over God. He will do things to make you compromise your walk just to deter you. And once it is true that you are committing sin, whether it is generation, commission, omission, what that does is that it's any time there's a sin, there must be a penalty for sin. And the penalty for sin does come in curses in which you demand to force. So that is how they operate. Once we give them that room, that opening, they are going to come in like a flood and through what Mr. Kion mentioned. They are just come with limitation. They come with unforgiveness. They come with low self-esteem, rage, anger. These things to frustrate. And most persons get easily frustrated with this stuff. They get frustrated with the job. The finances, because that's how people see it as their survival. So once you start interfering with person survival, that's when the Christian tends to sway yeah. and bend and compromise because they think that their survival is at risk. And we saw that with Job. And the enemy, we have to understand, he uses the same strategies to yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah. And with Job. He appeared before God and said, have not formed, have not God for my hedge of protection around him. And he said, but if I now touch what he has, he will curse me to thy face. Right. So it was Job's integrity and faithfulness that was being contended for as when the enemy was given access to such as things. It was an attack against his integrity, but Job was faithful. And that's why his wife said, Curse God and die. Why maintain thy integrity? But I like how you brought up that though, because the reason why the enemy uses that same strategy 
he affiliates our faithfulness with God, with the blessings that God gives us. And the enemy. Anytime he wants to affect you, he touches things that you're connected to. Yes. And, and he thinks that by if he could remove the blessings that he, the devil thinks we owe this little God for. for what we can get. Because if you think about it, that's probably the heart of demons. Mm -hmm. That's their thinking, what they can get. That's probably why they rebel against God in heaven. So they think the only reason why we serve God is for blessings. And once God removed the blessings, we would no longer serve God. And that's why as child of God, we need to prove the enemy wrong. Yes. If I get in authority, right? Yes. yes. One, one of the things that I, I usually say in the ministry of deliverance, if Satan cannot stop you from serving God, his next move is to try to limit you. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. his next move. That's that is so correct. He, he believes in the concept of not allowing that aircraft to take off from the hangar. He always has to take it out while it's in the hangar. Yeah. Because he knows if you get into first flight, you stand chances of reaching a destination. That's so right. he can limit you even before reaching on that runway. Even before you take yeah. off, yeah. So, so his art is always looking at the before taking that down the road. And you have to tell yourself when ever you are being limited is that there is something bigger down the road. Right? Ask yourself why you're not getting breakthrough in your studies. Because God see you as some doctor, some big philosopher down the road. Why are you in, in that in um, business and pushing forward. Maybe there are some big entrepreneurs that come that will help out many other persons in small business and these things. So this is where you need to push. This is where you need to walk even in greater obedience towards God. As, as we seek to bring this um, topic to a close, this part to a close, we ask that you join us again for part two on limitation. Any closing remarks, Dr. Rachel, Mr. Kion, before we go? Part two. Part two. <laughs> yes. CSR part two. So thank you for joining us on DRM Inspired Talk Show. Bye. Informing nations. Supporting people. Inspired.